It's great to be here. I, I want to talk about Git for pair programming. So um, how did I get there? I basically want to tell you two stories which are related. So the first one is how we are using Git by working um, on Cloud Foundry, in my case, to do pair programming. And the other is how I worked on Git to improve the situation, how to make it easier to work with Git for pair programming. So and this is something um, yeah, I came to from the Cloud Foundry product. Um, and that's the first time I actually started to use pair programming. And the, I started with that last year. Um, so let's start with explaining a little bit what pair programming is. And I would be interested in uh, who of you is actually doing pair programming. Raise, raise your hand if you're doing that. Ah, that's quite a number of people. That's, that's great. So what is pair programming? I want to start with uh, basically the uh, procedures, how you do that. Uh, it means that you have two people uh, working on one computer. And that's important that it's really only one computer, so you're not collaborating via pull requests or by sending uh, patches around, but you're actually working physically on the same computer. So both people have control of the mouse, both people see exactly the same on the screen, both people can uh, type at the same time. So they have to talk to each other, they have to coordinate and do what, what is necessary to be able to work together on one computer. What you usually do there is you separate roles, um, so one is the driver, that's, that's the person who has the keyboard and is doing the actual typing, and the other person is the navigator, who is more looking into um, a little bit longer term things, so how are things evolving, commenting on what, what the driver is doing, helping him, uh, avoiding mistakes and stuff like that. So, and this, this um, I'm talking here about doing really working on one physical computer. You can also do that remotely. That's a bit more challenging. challenging. That's a topic on its own. So I don't want to touch this that much. What does it take to do pair programming? How, how do, does, does it look like? So if you're really doing it consequently and you're doing it full day, um, that requires quite some rhythm. Uh, obviously, if you're working together with another person at the same computer, you have to be physically there, so you need a schedule where you can start and end at the same time. So th this is one, one of the things um, where you have to agree on and um, then synchronize. Um, also, pair programming is usually embedded in some kind of agile development uh, procedure, so there you also have daily meetings where you uh, synchronize uh, planning retros, and a typical day usually starts with a daily where you, where you talk about what you have done and where you talk about what you will do and you select uh, who is working with whom. So you're creating the pairs who are working for the rest of the day if you're doing it in this way where you're really work doing full-time pair programming. Um, and part of that also is uh, that you actually have frequent rotation. So, so you work together with the same person uh, for one day, for maybe two days, but then you often rotate and work with somebody else. So it's not like one person would work with another person for, for weeks or even months or something like that, but it's really about frequent rotation, um, also sometimes new people joining the team, or maybe sometimes uh, a person is on vacation or sick or whatever is uh, getting in the way there. So you have a frequent rotation working with other people, um, working on yeah, new stuff, new code, uh, whatever you work on. And to make that happen in a nice way, um, the physical setup, and this really is for the, for the uh, physical uh, in-person case, there, there you have uh, workstations which are prepared for pair programming. So what you often have is non-personalized workstations so that you don't use your own uh, desktop or your own laptop, but you have a workstation which is only there for pair programming and it's set up for the project you work on, but you don't have your personal account there, you don't have uh, your email there or something like that. It's only for, for developing on the project. Um, and then you have, if you have a nice setup, a nice table where they have enough, enough space to sit there conveniently and work together, two keyboards, two mirrored monitors, so that both people see the same thing. And that's all connected to this one computer uh, where you do the actual code. As this is coming from the um, extreme programming environment, that's, that's where uh, pair programming has a really huge role, uh, what is... Also important are a couple of techniques which, which are used there. 
So test-driven development is one thing which, which is uh, generally useful, of course, but when pairing, it becomes um, a quite interesting and new uh, dimension there because you can actually uh, work together in pairs and one can, person can write the test, the other can write the implementation. So this pairing um, setup uh, facilitates uh, test-driven development quite well. Continuous integration also is an important part there. Um, and that also helps with pairing. I mentioned this frequent rotation. So when you know that there is good CI in place, which makes sure that if you commit something which breaks a test, you see it immediately and it's not going out to production, uh, then you can much more easy work in a way uh, where you can bring in new people and where you can uh, rely on, on the CI to, to catch the, these, these mistakes, which, which might happen if you, if you rotate and maybe you don't know the code so well that, that you don't do any mistakes anymore. So, so this, all, all these techniques work very well together in, uh, in extreme programming, but of course, um, pair programming is not limited to this if you're doing formal XP, but you can use it in, in uh, your projects in different ways as well. So how does it look like if um, an actual pair programming session is happening? So that, that would be a typical uh, conversation which is happening uh, while you are doing pair programming. So one developer um, might start with, with a test. So let's, let's write a test, um, write, a, uh, write a test case uh, which specifies the, the, the feature we want to implement. The test fails, it's red or great. So then the other person takes over. The keyboard uh, control moves to the other person. The other person implements the, the functionality uh, we, we want to have. The tests are green, um, great. So usually when, when you implement something like that and when you do test-driven development, um, that you do a quick step in implementing the functionality, then there's some refactoring as part of the usual cycle. So you switch the keyboard control again and the first developer is uh, refactoring something, removing some duplication which is there. Um, and in this case, maybe the other developer um, sees while looking the, at the other developer uh, refactoring uh, something, removing some duplication. Oh, there's another place in the code which looks very similar. So maybe we can also um, uh, move, move that to, to a common function or something like that. So that would be a typical navigator role. So I see there's some more duplication, so let's tell the other developer, oh, why, why don't we remove that as well? Okay, and the other developer implements that. Um, tests are green, still green, everything is fine. Um, code is clean, functionality is there. Um, so we're done with one small step and we can uh, move on to the next uh, feature or the next uh, small part of functionality. So let's give the control to the next developer again. And we start again with the same cycle. And this kind of cycle is something which can take half an hour, but this can also take five minutes. Sometimes you also um, switch keyboard control much more often. And uh, sometimes maybe even while you are writing the commit message, um, somebody else, uh, uh, the, the other developer, uh, has a better idea how to formulate that inst instead of trying to tell the other person how to do it. Um, the other person just takes over the keyboard and says, oh, again, let's, let's write it this way, are you okay with that? Um, okay, fine, committed. So what you can see from that, it's really not possible to uh, tell who has written the code, who is the actual author. Is there only one author? No, in this case, we have two authors of the same code. Um, it's something which is, as a unit, they have worked together. Um, it's, it's different than if uh, one, one of them would have worked on, on this code. And this is, this is one of the challenges uh, we have, and I will talk later about that, how to represent this shared authorship um, in, in a version control system like it. So, um, this is all nice, but you might ask yourself the question, uh, why would I want to work this way? Does, does this even make sense? Or is, isn't this just a waste of time or a waste of resources, putting two people on the same problem? And I found this nice tweet um, where it says, yeah, but if your programmers are pairing, uh, wouldn't they write half as much code as if they wouldn't pair? And the answer is no, hopefully they will write even less code. And that's, that's the thing. Programming is not about creating as much code as possible. On the contrary, I think it's, it's really one of the most honorable acts to remove code, to delete code, so that things become simpler, they become better designed. Um, and that's something which happens when, when you are pairing. Part of the pairing is that you have the earliest possible code review. 
So you are not reviewing code when it's written, but you are reviewing it while it's written, or you are even reviewing it before it's written because you have a conversation. You have to talk to each other when you are pairing. And of course, you discuss ideas before you write code. So you do code review uh, before you go into a lot of work of writing down code, which then, then won't, won't be used or you have to change again. So this, this creates a very, very short feedback cycle. And this feedback cycle, that's very important for code quality. You all know that from programming. Uh, review helps, feedback helps, and that makes your code better. Uh, that, that makes uh, the, the program better. And with pair programming, you, you get um, the earliest possible code review to really increase the quality. And that is what, what you, you see when, when people are pairing, um, that uh, the code quality is actually quite high. And uh, the productivity, there are studies about that, um, it's actually about the same, so you don't lose anything, but you don't uh, win a lot uh, in terms of output, in a, a quantified output, but the quality of, of the output is uh, higher than if you would work alone, because you have this early feedback. Another part is learning. So if you do something on your own, you can learn things as well, but if you're doing it together with somebody else, um, you, you have a partner, you, have to, uh, you can ask questions, you can see how your partner is uh, using commands, how, how, how they are using uh, the different utilities. We heard a lot about how to learn Git today, and this actually is a great way when you're pairing, just watching somebody else operating Git, they might know different options like you do, they, they might have a different experience, uh, more knowledge there, so, so you learn that just by watching and then by doing it yourself while the other person is still sitting there and, and watching over your sh shoulder and helping you if, if you do something wrong. So that's, that's again, with the, the short feedback loop, a great way how to learn. And it's not only a great way to learn for new people, but also for people who have more experience. And uh, because programming problems um, are usually new problems, you, you won't solve the same problem again and again and again. Uh, but you will always ha will have to learn something, and in your area you might not have uh, the experience your partner has. So this is a great way to share knowledge, to bring in new people, but also to share knowledge so, so that you ha can develop a group and a team which um, is much broader than, than, than what you would have if you just would work on, on, your, on your own. And you don't have the, these, these experts which only know one thing to do, but, but you have a group of people who are, who, who are able to work on what matters, not what they are able to do. And another aspect which I also find quite interesting, um, pairing, of course, um, is, is a social uh, environment. You, you are working together with another other person. So sometimes... Um, we geeks um, are said to not be very social, or we might have trouble with creating social interaction, starting a conversation or something like that. Um, and that's true. I mean, there are introverts which, uh, well, it's just for, the, for them, it might be more energy to, to start a conversation or to ask somebody a question than, than for others. The great thing about pair programming is that this, this very controlled environment gives, gives you a safe environment. So, so you're sitting there with, with your partner for the day and you're pairing. So, so it's a natural conversation. You have a problem to solve. You're focused on, on what you're doing. Um, and you don't have to think about if it's okay to ask somebody who is occupied with some, something else a question or how to get some social interaction, maybe talking about something different than programming because you're sitting there all day and, and this is happening. So it's actually... It's intense, but it's actually a pretty nice environment because you're not, not that stressed by, by this uh, maybe difficult social interaction. And it provides a great focus because you uh, don't have all these distractions you often have. You don't have Facebook because it's a not personalized machine. You don't have uh, all these distractions which might happen. So you, you are talking with your partner and you, you are uh, kept on track by, by the other person. And one nice way how to see a uh, pairing is, um, uh, that's, that's Socrates. Um, you know the Socratic method, uh, which is in philosophy a structured way how to solve problems or how to find the truth by asking questions, by questioning assumptions. And that's what, what is happening when, when you are pairing. Because you, you ask your other uh, partner yeah, questions. Why are you doing it this way? Why do you think that's a better solution? And, and this, this, this way you quickly get into uh, better solutions. And even if you don't have enough experience, don't have a lot of experience, you, you find um, answers to uh, difficult questions together. So um, th that's kind of the, the nice theory behind that. Um, the practical challenges when working um, 
with pair programming and working with Git um, are, are there as well. And uh, I'm, I'm working on Cloud Foundry, uh, which is a big open source project doing platform as a service. And this is one of the few projects which actually systematically does pair programming even in an open source project. So it's actually in the uh, governance uh, documents where it says, okay, code has to be uh, written with another development, pairing. So th this is the governance, and uh, most teams actually follow this. Um, there are options to that, but most teams actually do that and do pair programming all day. And that poses a couple of challenges. Um, so um, a typical commit line uh, would look like this. Um, <clears throat> and the problem is, if I'm working as a pair, how do I reflect that in Git? So GitHub nicely shows pictures of the people who worked on some, something. And uh, they, they luckily show committers and authors as two pictures. So this is a way where we kind of worked around this limitation by using the committers and the authors uh, to reflect who is working on, on a patch. So we can put in two people which are shown on, on GitHub, for example. And because that's not really symmetric, we are alternating and one person is uh, uh, the, the author with one commit and then in the next commit we just switch roles. So this is not ideal, but that th this is at least a workaround to reflect this shared authorship. And in the git commit logs, it would show up like this. So, so where you have the author, the committer, um, and we, we switch between that. So doing this with playing git is quite annoying because you have to change the author configuration all the time and you have to put in command line options to set the committer info and whatever. So, so this is not really convenient. So luckily, there's a nice tool called Git Duet, which is used by lots of people doing pair programming, and this encapsulates that. It's, it's a wrapper for Git, basically. So you set the authors, which are currently working on something with Git Duet, and then you have some initials, which you put from a configuration file, and then you can use Git Duet commit, and this will make sure that author and committer are set and alternated uh, when, when you're working on different commits. You also have other wrappers for revert and for, mer for merge, um, but it's not native, it's a wrapper. And this is where it becomes um, more ugly. So for a rebase, for example, uh, you have to, uh, to use a quite complex line because you somehow have to sneak in the duet commit there. And, and that's, of course, something uh, where, where you are lacking this native support of Git for multiple authors because Git doesn't know about uh, the fact that there are two people working on the same thing. So this is one of the challenges where this, uh, as nice as git to add is, uh, the concept breaks down a little bit because uh, the native support is missing, and we are only working around the fact that it doesn't have support for multiple authors. There are lots of other challenges. Most of them are actually pretty small, so you can work quite productively, uh, but bug trackers, issue trackers, uh, project management tools, they, they all have challenges there. And even if GitHub is showing uh, uh, two pictures for, for the commits, when, when you're writing a command, it does not. There you only have one, one person who has lo is locked in. And as when you're doing pair programming, you often type in a command and you also switch roles there. So it's really also collaborative work, not something from a single author. So even there, you, you would ne actually need two pictures of two people to reflect that. So for something like assigning bugs, assigning issues, that's often there. So, so you can put in uh, two people. Uh, but for comments, for example, that, that's, that's not possible. And another issue with that is, especially if you're using these, these non-personalized workstations, is that um, somebody has to log in. So if you're on one shared machine, you might not want to provide all your, your uh, authorization information there. So, so what, what we often do is, or mo if it's possible, we use two-factor authentication, so at least you have a second factor where, where you can safely log in without compromising your security too much. One challenge with that, um, with Git, also is that you need to commit to a repository, you need to have access to that, so you usually have an SSH key. Um, we work around this, this problem um, that, that you don't want to put your private key on a shared machine uh, by putting it on a USB stick. So, so we, we just put the, the, the private key on the USB stick and then use um, SSH agent to temporarily um, activate the key. So during the session, you can just say, okay, 
add this, but let it expire after uh, a few hours, um, and then you can work with it while you are sitting together so, so that, that you share the session, but after that, it's gone again, and you don't have to share your, your secrets, but you just share your, your work. So, um, the, the, these are the, the kind of practical challenges uh, we have, and of course, it would be nice to improve on that. Um, how can we do that? How, how can we become better there and make our tools uh, better adapt to this workflow of pair programming? There are three kinds of categories um, there. So the first category is tools which already work. Email is such a tool. Um, it provides support for multiple authors. Um, that's in the specification. So you can have more than one from address. Um, if you do that, you have to uh, add a sender address. Um, but then you, you have that already. So email is not a problem. Um, I don't think it's very commonly used, but you can reflect um, this. There are other tools which, which do that. Um, so in terms of version control systems, Bazaar, for example, has the notion of multiple authors. So you can do it. So that's nice, but not all tools do it. And uh, how, how can we improve the others? There's another class of tools, such as GitHub, um, which are proprietary. We, we can't really change. We can, of course, create feature requests. We can ask people to improve them. We can provide ideas there. But there we are kind of, um, yeah, we as a community can't really fix that problem other than hoping that um, the people who control these tools do that and we can make a good case and hope that they, they help there. And then there's the other cat category of open source tools where we actually can do changes ourselves and we can propose uh, improvements and do that. And one of this, of course, is Git. Git is open source. Um, and um, so everybody can contribute and fix that. Of course, it has to be discussed and it has to uh, be in the, uh, <clears throat> in, the, in the scope of the tool and, and the quality has to be okay of what we submit there, but, but we are able to, to discuss and propose that and work on that together. Yeah, and that's what I did. So I'm, I'm a programmer, so I express my thoughts through code in many cases. So for this, I started with, with a prototype implementation to support multiple authors in Git. And I implemented a new command, git authors, um, to see how it works and to see how, how far I come there and if that might be a concept, how, how we could actually get native support. Yeah, and I submitted that um, as, as a request for comment um, upstream. So this slide is just for reference. There are previous discussions. Um, there will be future discussions, and uh, th this patch um, I just did for illustration. So, uh, as a disclaimer, what I'm talking now about, that's unlikely to end in Git as it is, uh, but maybe it's a starting point for an implementation. Uh, we, we can finish in the future, which actually adds this multiple author support and helps um, yeah, do it, people doing pair programming doing that in a, in a better way than, than we are doing it now. How does it look like? Um, it's modeled after the uh, model of Git Duet. So we have a file which defines the authors um, and the initials, so you can uh, easily use them. As you're switching quite frequently between authors when you're doing pair programming, it's uh, convenient if you have a command where you can do that without having to type in email addresses with all the fragility that this brings, the potential for typos. But you can just say, okay, I have some initials which identify an author, and then the tool checks that, that they are there and sets in the correct uh, data. So we have a file which, which does the, that, so you define it there. And uh, git authors has a list of uh, can show a list of um, the, the author, authors it knows reading from the file, showing errors if something is wrong there. So then when you are doing a pair programming session, um, the first thing you do, you get together with your, your partner, and then uh, you run git authors with the two initials uh, you, of, of uh, who is working on it, and uh, this sets then configuration in git so, so that git knows about it. <coughs> You can show it with Git authors. It also shows the expansion, so if there's something wrong, you can see it. Uh, and in the configurations, there's a new section, um, authors, which just lists, lists the current uh, authors which, which are working on a piece of code. Now, when this is registered, I can actually do commits or, or the other commands. And if I commit something, then, I, then 
with my patch, Git would record this information in, in the header. So when you do git log, you actually see the two authors there, and uh, they are listed there in the header. Uh, in the pretty view, if you look at the raw header, uh, the option I experimented with, I tried, is adding a new header there, a new optional header, authors, which lists the, the, the two authors, or multiple authors even, uh, which um, have authored this, this particular commit. And this is actually backwards compatible to probably quite a number of tools. I don't know exactly because I can't try all of them. <laughs> I tried GitHub, for example. If you push a repository with this kind of data to GitHub, um, it actually still works. But that's actually one of the problems uh, which is there, that adding a header is a quite intrusive change. So as I said, you could also add three authors or only one author when you are soloing. You could also clean the author. So that's kind of helper commands I implemented. And this is the scope of, of the, yeah, the, the patch I did and the, to, to start the discussions how to do that. So one result of this, <clears throat> this discussion actually was that adding this as a header is uh, quite intrusive. Um, and it's difficult to tell what it breaks. So we can, of course, check all the tools which are in tree in Git, but there are many other implementations, alternative implementations. And that's actually an area where, where I would appreciate feedback. So if you are working on something which doesn't use the Git tool itself to interpret commit headers, uh, I would really like to know if a change like this would break your tool. Would, would it break your implementation or not? Would it still work? So one suggestion uh, was to alternatively not implement a new header which reflect, reflects the, the shared authorship, uh, but put it into the, into the message of the commit as, as a trailer, as, as we have many different kinds of um, trailers, and you could, in, could put in a co-authored by. Um, you can, of course, do that now already by, by putting it in manually, uh, but it would be much nicer if there would be better support so that, that you can use uh, shortcuts to set this and Git automatically adds that and you don't have to manually add it. And also that, that with all the commands like, with, which merge um, and cherry pick and uh, use commits in different ways, that they preserve the the, this information in some, some automated and structured way. So this is kind of where we are, uh, where I am with this um, idea, this concept, this implementation. Um, and where do we go from, from there? So I see a hopeful future there, and I'm calling it hopeful on one hand because I'm optimistic that things can be changed, that there are better ways um, to, to work with Git as pair programmer, uh, but also because we need some hope that this actually works out because it's a lot of tools, not everything is open source, we don't have control about everything. So it's, it's something, it's a, it's a journey, I would say, to, to add this. So what I, what I really would like to see is that, that, that we get native supporting Git. So th this would be amazing for, for doing uh, pep programming because this would help us work around the issues I, I, I showed with difficult commands or not, not correct or not accurate authorship information. So native support in Git would, would be a great step. And I tend to spend more time on this experiment with, with other ways how to represent the information. If anybody is interested in helping with that or joining me in this, this effort, I, uh, I'm more than happy to, to collaborate there. I mean, it's, it's about collaboration. So collaborating on this kind of feature is, makes a lot of sense. The other thing is then supporting other open source tools, um, stuff like Git K or, or other tools which are around Git, which uh, show information. Also, there, I think there are better ways how to reflect this information because it's quite essential. The authorship information is, is, is at the core of a commit. So, so improving these tools to show them in a better way would, would go a long way. And then, of course, supporting other tools um, like GitHub, um, that's, that's, of course, something which is difficult to achieve uh, because uh, there are many feature requests and you can only do so much. But I think um, it, it would be great to, to have that. And of course, for all these people who are doing pair programming, and there are lots here in the room, um, so I think it would, would be a, a great improvement. But no matter what the tooling situation is, uh, pair programming is amazing. So if you have a chance, uh, try it. It's great. So, and that's it. <laughs>